I wanted to start with this uh, scripture here that I found in, in Mark chapter 12, and, and it's verse number 30, and it says this, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, i got a question to ask you. What do you think when you hear the word radical? You know, for some of you, when you first hear the word radical, you probably think of uh, radical Islamic terrorists, you know. Uh, some of you uh, Christians who keep up with uh, a lot of pastors may think of this book that came out last, well, actually a few months ago called Radical, written by David Platt, a very good preacher, by the way. Actually, he just preached here at seminary last week, and uh, he's a very good preacher, and, and uh, I haven't had the chance to read that book yet, but uh, I've heard great reviews about it. But, you know, my question is, you know, and it's the title of this devotional, too, should we use the term radical? Now, the way that I understand this term, that you know, how people are using it, is that we have to stand out from the world and live the Christian life the way it should be lived according to God's work. That's the way that I understand ra radical. I could be wrong, and of course if I am, I encourage you to please uh, send me a message on Facebook and just let me know. Because I'm not perfect and, you know, I do misunderstand things. I'm human, just like everybody else. But that's the way that I understand it, is the point I'm trying to make. And it seems like when we use this word, it's it becomes that we're telling people out in the world that there's two types of Christians. We have our radical Christians, the ones who are living according to God's Word. And then you have your Christians who just come to church, and then that's it. In other words, a Sunday Christian. And then, of course, you have your non-believers as well. Now, of course, yeah, that is true in our society. We do have Christians who do live according to God's Word. Unfortunately, we do have Christians as well that you know, who do nothing but come to church and whine and complain about everything. And then, of course, you have your non-believers. Now, according to Scripture, and again, I may be wrong on this, you know, that's why I keep encouraging y'all to please send me, you know, messages on my devotions. But according to this verse, Mark chapter 12, verse 30, I don't see where any Christian is exempt from that. Basically, it's a command that says, and thou shalt, in the King James Version, in other words, means, and you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. You know, unfortunately, if Christians today would have been doing what they were supposed to be doing in, in the first place, we wouldn't be having this conversation about being a radical Christian. But unfortunately, you do have people in churches today, you know, that, I'll be honest with you, I'm not for sure whether they're even saved. And I've talked to a lot of pastors, and they kind of say the same thing, you know. And really, to be honest with you, that's really sad. You know, here in Southern Baptist life, we sit here and wonder why churches today are either reaching their plateau or their... Uh, shrinking in size. The reason why churches are dying today is because we got too many people in our churches who don't come there to worship God. They come to worship themselves. Because everything has to go past them. Everything has to be according to what they want and not what God wants. And you know what? That's a terrible example that we are setting for non-believers. You know, back in, you know, meeting with different non-believers in, you know, in different areas, 
you know, that's what they say. They say, you know, churches today, they don't act no different than we do, so why should we go? And really, that's a valid question. That is a very valid question. Now, I also believe that they shouldn't be using that as an excuse not to go to church, but we'll get to that another time. But it's really sad when we have churches today who sit here and claim that Jesus is Lord and that they follow the Word of God, but yet most of the time when they're outside the church building, they're a whole different person. And there's even sometimes, even in the church building, they're still the same way. I mean, the way that I interpret this scripture is that no one is exempt. Every single Christian is commanded to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And if we're going to have any revival in this country, that is what Christians need to start doing. If they don't do this, it's not going to happen. In fact, I'll even go this far, and probably some of you will not agree with this. But if we don't change our ways, Christianity in the United States will come very close. They'll either be barely surviving, or it will cease to exist. We're already seeing that in Europe. And we're following right in that path. Now, let me read another scripture to you. And it comes from John chapter 14 and verse 15. And it says this, If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, it's hard to call yourself a Christian if you don't follow God's word. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, there's different parts of the Bible that's not true. Uh, basically, what the Bible is, is just a bunch of books picked by human people and, and all that stuff. And, you know, and I'll say, yeah, there were councils there that, that met on recognizing, you know, what books were authoritative and what books, you know, came from, from God. And this is an excuse also from a lot of people that don't want to go to church. They say, well, you know, I have faith in God, but I don't need to go to church. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. How is that working out for you? Most people that I know, and there may be exceptions. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean or nasty, but there might, might be exceptions, but I haven't met one yet. That's you know that tells me that they, you know, don't go to church, but they don't live, a, but they live a, a holy life to God. And when you're saying that parts of the Bible is true, let me ask you this: you know, you you may say, well, yeah, I do believe that I am saved. Well, the Bible tells you how you're saved. So if you're saying there's parts of the Bible that ain't true or we shouldn't accept the Bible the way that it is, how do you know for sure that you're saved? And you know what? I'll even say this. You know, I don't know what it's like in other denominations. I can tell you about Southern Baptist churches. In a lot of Southern Baptist churches, only about 10% of the people do the work. And a lot of the others just sit back and sit on the sidelines and they'll sit there and whine and complain about everything. And they don't follow the commands of God. Can you really call yourself a Christian if you're not following what God is, tells you <clears throat> excuse me, in His Word? Because to me, the Bible is pretty clear. You're either a Christian or you're a non-Christian. There is no in-between. And let me prove that to you right now. Let me read one more scripture to you. And it comes from the book of Revelation. When Jesus talks to the church of Laodicea. And he says this, starting at verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, 
the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see, even Jesus wants us to either be a Christian or not. If you're one of these people who likes to try to be in between, I will tell you this right now. You will be going straight to hell. Because Jesus said it right there in verse 16. If you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. And what I interpret that to mean is this. You're going straight to hell. If you're lukewarm, you know, all you're doing is just lying to people. And that counts as sin. And you know what? I'll even say this. And I really hate to say this. It pains me to say this. But I really honestly believe there's a lot of people in our Southern Baptist churches today who hold leadership positions. There's probably even some pastors. And yes, I understand that salvation is between that person and God. But if they don't live a life that reflects them following the commandments of God, I can't call them a Christian. In fact, I'm not for sure whether they are or not. So the point of my devotion today is this. If you do call yourself a Christian, you need to get into this. The Word of God. You know, some people may say, I can just live through faith and that's it. God didn't call us to have faith and, and then sit down. He calls us to have faith and then live it out. And the only way you can live it out is if you read this and trust what it says. I know that from my own experience. I told you in my testimony in my last video, there was a time where I turned away from the Word of God. You know where that got me? Nowhere. But praise God, He let me come back. And I started following His Word and... and my life is 18 times better. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's, it's a lot easier. No, life is still hard. But I, I understand now how much of an awesome God that I serve because of His Word. And churches today need to stop fighting over the color of the carpet, how the preacher is preaching, you know, what certain people to let in and get back to the Word of God. Because if we don't, then we're going to die. And we can't be called a church anymore. So I hope and pray that if you are one of these people that's kind of in between or, or what have you, I just pray that if you, you know, if you really did accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, I hope you go out and live out your faith. It's not just because God commanded it, because it shows people that you do love God. Jesus died for us. Because He loved us. And we need to show that love back to Him by obeying His Word. Now like I said, if you have any comments or anything about this video, please send them to me. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, God bless you and you have a great week.